بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب زدني علما now there is one more option with as a remote a remote access uh, first we'll verify this before we get into the ssh now mostly in the previous whatever we did it was authenticating now i'm able to tell it to the asa tell it to the asa the telnet is working without any username generally so it's just a password so whatever the password you have set for the telnet like i have set uh, nwa123 that's a password i'm able to log in but there is no user account used so sometimes you may want no, not sometimes most of the time you want to do authentication based on the user accounts so whenever the user whenever someone tries to log in i don't want that user to be uh, unknown i want the asa should prompt for the username and the password so that if anyone make any changes or anything happens i can at least come to know which user have used or logged in and what are the changes he did so basically you need to know that information because you generally don't want everyone to use the same password you will restrict based on the user accounts where you assign a separate users with a separate passwords so in my case also i want the remote access whether it is ssh or telnet i will verify in terms of telnet here requires a username and the password so we can either use a remote servers Uh, either you can configure a Cisco I server where you can store the username and the password, or where you can integrate with Active Directory, where you can say that if someone telnets, go and check with the Cisco Eyes and verify the username and the password. So that is something we'll be seeing more in the Cisco I section, where we'll be using external servers to manage the external database for authentication process. authentication authorization accounting so that's what the mainly the cisco i paper or covers more on that as of now we are not getting into the external servers instead of using external servers i'm going to create a user account locally so there are options either you can use a remote server which is a practically the scalable solution in the production scenarios because when you have hundreds of users or 10 to 30 users or hundreds of devices local authentication is not scalable so in my case i'm going to create a user account locally so the username and the password will be used local where i'm going to create a user account with a password and i'm going to tell that the authentication has to be done based on the local user account so which means if you want to authenticate based on the local username and the password we need to configure few commands here So the first command is we need to make sure that on the ASA we we should tell the telnet connection should be accepted only for these users. So we did this already. So the telnet connection, if it is coming from ten dot zero dot ten dot subnet slash twenty four, it will be permitted. And even if it is coming from one dot network, it will be permitted. That's the first thing. we did this already in our previous uh, section of the previous lab now additionally what i want to do is i want the authentication should be done based on the local user account so for that first we need to create a user account so we'll create a user account username a simple name you can use let's say i'm using admin and the password whatever the password you want to set let's say ny123 is a password so we need to create a user account and then we need to give the option called triple a triple a stands for authentication authorization and accounting so we'll be talking about more in the cisco i section normally where you have a separate dedicated paper focused on only authentication authorization and accounting using external servers so so most of the time whatever the authentication here whether it is a telnet authentication or ssh which will be using later on or even gui will also manage uh, gui remote access via graphical interface so whatever it is we need to make sure that we enable the authentication so to enable authentication for the users we need to tell triple a authentication that's the command authentication 
And then we need to tell this authentication method should be enabled for which type of connection, whether you want this for telnet or SSH or HTTP. So we'll be using HTTP as well. Uh, when we get into the ASDM topic, we'll be using SSH as well. Uh, right now, I want this authentication should be done based on the user accounts for telnet connections. So I'm going to specify telnet. And then uh, we need to say console. Console is uh, generally like the telnet connection, basically. And then we need to use a keyword called local. Now local is going to tell that this authentication, so anyone is trying to log in to AAA, nothing but authentication has to be done by using the local account. So this local keyword says that uh, it's going to use the local username and the password it means local username and the password what we have created it's going to check with the database local database now again while we are doing this make sure that we are using the cap letters here capital local not small local because if i use a small letters as local it's going to the asav is going to consider as it's going to be signed of triple server and it will try to reach that one. So when I use a capital letters local, it means that it's going to use the local server or the local authentication. So there's a difference. So make sure that you don't uh, forget this. Uh, local, it has to be capital uh, case since two, the local with capital letters, which basically says that the triple is going to use the local authentication. Now, once I enable these commands, if I go back to my router and if I try to initiate a telnet connection to my ASA from whichever the network which is allowed, now this time it is going to prompt me for the username, whatever the username I have created and whatever the password I have assigned to that. So most of the time in the production scenarios or generally you prefer to go with local authentication. So local authentication, again, remember, make sure that you permit the network and then you create a user account and then define the telnet connection should be only accepted via local authentication. So if you're using external servers, then there will be a little bit different configurations, but mostly the hierarchy will be the same. So from here, you, you specifically define some external server name here instead of capital local.